Hi, I'm Ben Folds. Today on the Arts Vote 2020 podcast series on art and politics, Senator Mark Begich and I talked to presidential candidate Congressman John Delaney. Speaking to Congressman Delaney after our session, he confessed to me his love for Bruce Springsteen. He's gone to over 30 Springsteen concerts. There's a fun fact for you. He also served on the board of directors for the National Symphony Orchestra in Washington, D.C., and he loves the idea of a National Service Artist Corps and would love to double the budget of the National Endowment for the Arts if he were to become president. So here's the conversation we had with presidential candidate, Congressman John Delaney. So let me ask you, you know, you've mentioned how you've been engaged with your kids and kind of how things have changed. Tell me a little bit more about that. What is that like as a parent and what is changing now in the sense of how you work with your kids around arts? My oldest daughter is 26 and now my my youngest is 12, so I have a big span. I've watched the technology change at these. And how they use them. Yeah, so it used to be the parents would set up their, like, video cameras, which was like a big thing. You'd get the spot and you'd have the big thing, and, you know, now it's obviously changed. Yeah, now they sell the DVDs afterwards. That's right, that's right. They make it easy for you. Yeah. Uh, Ben, you know, you you heard John talk about how it's impacted him, and I guess, you you, you know, you you are in the arts every day in Mm -hmm. one form or another, and you're meeting artists. Uh, you know, here we are in this presidential race and the campaigns are now starting to evolve. What are artists telling you in, in what have you think is important with regards to what the presidential candidate should be thinking about? Yeah. Well, I, I, I think, uh, you know, probably the first uh, place an artist's mind uh, goes is where it all starts, which, which is education. And uh, I, I think, you know, a, a, an artist by, by nature is uh, looking at human nature and communicating constantly. Mm-hmm. So it's probably more obvious sometimes to, uh, to an artist what's going on with the fabric of society. And I, I view time spent in uh, discussing the arts and arts policy and leading on arts as one of those long-term uh, fabric of society sort of issues. You can look at a whole lot of things and we can argue about why they go wrong. And eventually it's like, well, it's the same constitution. It's the same law. It's the same uh, uh, temptation to, uh, to, to maybe skirt some sort of tax issue or anything. But you see that some generations more than others take the bait. Uh, and, so, and some of them fall down on the job, like I feel like we see now. And I suppose that the arts have a lot to do with the formation of a person in school. Mm-hmm. You know, you learn to sing with other people. You're learning to sing in harmony. You're learning to sing in unison. You're learning to work together. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what you see when you see the NSO, uh, Symphony Orchestra. You're seeing the symbol of uh, uh, the, an artistic symbol for civilization people working together. And I'm glad to, to hear you uh, say that um, uh, that it's important to symbolically lead from the top down on this thing. Somehow, uh, our leaders have to have a great talent for framing the arts for as important as they are in the way they contribute to society. It's tough because, I mean, I, th- I think that, that, that possibly if we look at it as what can the arts do for us rather than what we're trying to do for the arts? I'm here because I had a nice living uh, in the arts, and I can see so many ways that it gives back. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think often when I'm talking to, for instance, music fans, if they have a little misunderstanding of why I go advocate for the arts, it doesn't take long to convince them that, no, no, we're trying to see what the arts can do. I mean, I go to so many towns for 25, 30 years on tour, and see certain towns transformed by what they call the cultural creatives, right? Creative mm-hmm. culture, whatever that, that is. Those are basically artists, broke artists that come through and create something interesting. And that interest brings other business in. And I think those sorts of, um, you know, I wouldn't know as an artist where we start with policy. But it does strike me that for being such a big part of the gross national product that uh, arts and the entertainment in general – Sure, sort of get a, a a a low place on the totem pole. I mean, look at what we give to the NEA a year. It pay, it, you know, we pay for that in twenty minutes. Yeah. By the time we're finished with this podcast, yeah. the yeah. NEA has been paid for for the entire year, and the clock runs out for the rest of the time. Symbolically, like how is how is a leader in a news cycle that is so insane now? How do you break through that 
to sort of begin to approach the importance of the arts? Well, you know, listen, it's hard to break through on so many issues with the mm, new cycle that right. now, right? Yeah. I mean, a, a big theme of my campaign is this notion of responsible leadership, because I think what we've really had for a long time is irresponsible leaders. Uh, responsible leaders would have actually addressed a lot of the issues we've already dealt with in society. Right. Responsible leaders would have tried to find common ground and make progress. Responsible leaders would be honest with the American people always about what our problems, what our opportunities are, and, and the best way forward. And responsible leaders would also talk about things that are really important to all of us, and that's where the arts comes in. Right. I mean, we've seen, I mean, you know, President Kennedy was obviously the most eloquent mm -hmm. on this topic. Um, when he, you know, implored the nation to reward achievement in the arts at the same level that we were, uh, reward achievement in business and, and statesmanship, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really the right way of thinking about it is to make sure we have parity, uh, with the arts as we do in other aspects of our society. Because if you ask people about, you know, if, if you say in the last week, what did you do that you really enjoyed? Right. There's a high correlation between some experience with the arts, yeah, right? Going yeah. to a movie that they loved or going to a show or listening to their favorite artist, whatever the case may be. Like Those are say, kind of their high, high points of the week. So it just, you know, we're much more complicated than I think we often get reduced to by our right. elected officials. And the arts are a big part. And it's all different. Like, you know, you know I love listening to music, right? Uh, you know, some people like going to Broadway shows. I mean, it's all, it's all different, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's a matter of interest. You know, once you've put the roof over your head and you have clean water and your kids are fed, the next thing you do with your money is generally of interest. Yes. You know, like, what am I interested in? OK, well, I'm interested in going downtown to this newly revitalized theater and they have mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. show and I'll have to park my car and that stimulates the economy. and I have to go buy a coffee before. And the things that you do with your money when you're led through the arts seems to be that alone, even if it wasn't important in the way uh, kids test scores uh, uh, are, are affected and their, and their education is affected, plus well-being and health and all these things. Even if it was just the economy alone, it, it, it strikes me as a very important thing to be able to communicate to people, especially in that cycle, like you say. I mean, and, then, and that's another problem. I have you know, plenty of uh, very, very uh, smart friends who, as soon as you say, oh, you know, we, we need to make sure that we put a little money in the arts. You go, well, if you're going to put it in that, why don't you put it in this and this and this and this and this as well? And pretty soon it gets shuffled back down to the bottom mm -hmm. again. Can I ask you, let sure. me, I'm going to take up on one of your mm -hmm. items, which was the education piece. And, and, you know, you think about it, and then I want to also, because I think your point on the business impact that it has or the economy, economics. Yeah. So two issues that I picked up on both of, your, both of you talking. First, the education piece. This is a big Conversation that's going on, uh, science, technology, engineering, math, STEM, or add in art. So how important do you think, John, in regards to K through 12 or even pre-K, the education system is to have arts as part of it and part of when people think of these very important skill levels that are for us to compete worldwide, and you've been in business, so you understand this competitive nature we're in, to have arts as part of that equation. Well, I think it's very important, and I think it's unfortunately been crowded out in the last uh, several decades in public education, you know, in part because of the demands of testing, mm -hmm. which have created a dynamic where so many schools and teachers really have to teach the to test, the test to the test to the yeah, test. So, so they're spending a lot of time preparing for that. And, and so it's crowded out a lot of things like the arts mm -hmm. and, and other things that are really important. So I think it should be uh, central to a public educational experience. I, I happen to be someone who's advocating for universal pre-K and also expanded early childhood education. And uh, as we all know, those of us, I have four kids, and they had the privilege of having early childhood education. Right. A lot of it is music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly music, right. Because as you said, uh, Ben, you can, you can get kids working well together yeah. around yeah. songs and yeah. shows and performances. And, uh, it, you know, it's really interesting at a young age, that's kind of one of the organizing principles of an educational experience, which, which is to have the kids singing. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, it is... Uh, again, same thing. We were fortunate to have our son able to have pre-K. And that experience is around art, maybe painting or sculpture or singing or yeah. music. It's That is kind of a core basis, which is very interesting from that perspective. Yeah, well, I mean, I, th I think, uh, you know, uh, it gets overlooked that um, 
art and you know music is my my thing so i bring up music a lot but i there's a lot more to art like you say some 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 kids are, like to bust a move others like to paint right, a thing right. you know so we've all got different things but but in in, in general it, it it begins as communication right so the tool of that like if i was not a musician if i hadn't have, uh, uh, gotten very lucky in my business I was most lucky to have had a good arts education growing up. That's, to me, more valuable than – it was more valuable to my being a person than it was to my career. The career was a lot of luck. But the things around it, the way that I know how to run a business, mm-hmm. communicate with people, uh, advertise what I do, make it aesthetically – uh, proper. All those things I learned in lower school uh, because they were just part of the scenery. We used to sit down on the floor and do this little uh, uh, rhythm exercise, and they had stuff written on the board. You go ta ti ti ta ta. <laughs> Amazing. Didn't cost a thing. I sat on the floor and did this. That was the time of the day that I felt part of the group, something that I could do. It was, uh, and it gave me confidence. The smallest little thing, and it didn't take anything at all. And when people say, "Well, we don't have money for." all this music education stuff. And I have to say, that didn't cost anything. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just understanding how important it is and understanding actually what art is. And it's not like, oh, we need a bunch of money to go make some really obscure stuff. No, we need to just unlock what's important. We need a little bit of time. If you had to boil it down, how? what policy, in your opinion, is the most pressing and the most effective because what I notice as I start to learn a bit about this is you look at all the presidents and then you look at what happened to the NEA and you can hardly correlate the the pattern at all. You know, it went up the most, I think, under Nixon. I right. think that's correct, right? You know, it's 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 like they, they tried to zero it out this time right. and I think it may have slightly gone up, did it? It's slightly about, gone, yeah. yeah. Okay, well. Yeah, but they tried to zero it out. How, how does the president actually navigate that and what are the policies? Well, so I think, you know, I think a president has to ensure that it's a priority, right? right? And you have to ensure that the funding, and I I think what's almost happened is the best way to ensure that it has good levels of funding is not to actually talk about the funding, right? because that's when it becomes kind of a political issue, right? which is they'd rather spend money on this than on our troops, right? Right. It becomes all these false choices that Mm -hmm. get made in politics for the, for the, for the benefit of the politicians, not for the benefit of any citizens or human beings in this country. But I do think it's leadership. I do, I do think a president should speak about this, hmm. right? It should be part of a president's portfolio. You know, a president has a lot of responsibility, so maybe they're not going to be talking about it every day. Right, of course. But they yeah. ought to have some singular event that they do. One of the things I noticed um, from some of the stuff that I saw in advance of this meeting was this notion of creating as part of national service. hmm an artist corps. Yeah, I love that. And I, I love it too, and I want to work it into actually, because I've called for national service. I've called for a program that every high school graduate has an opportunity to serve their country. Not an obligation, but an opportunity to serve their country, either by joining the military, doing community service, being part of something I call the Climate Corps, mm-hmm. which would be young people going around the country and helping communities with sustainability projects, yeah. infrastructure. Uh, kind of an infrastructure core. We've talked about an elder core, which is people who go help uh, our seniors kind of connect technologically, right? You know, help them, you know, which I find sometimes I ask my 12-year-old to do. Right, right, right. I'd like to participate. But I think <laughs> the art, an artist core is a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think as part of a national service program, you could have something around yeah. the arts. I like that too, especially when it comes to people who should be giving back. That's right. More, more, more of my uh, homies should uh, should be having to you know, at least embarrassed into uh, being part of a, an artist core, you know, and there's so many kids in college that would love to be in music or art. And this is the way to do it. Yes. Put their asses to work. I mean, it's really an investment. I yes. mean, when you think about the multiplier effect, if you invest, I mean, if the imagine the Kennedy Center not yeah. here, right? Well, what would happen? I mean, it, that economic churn that it has, not just for that moment. I wouldn't be coming to D.C. as much. You wouldn't be coming to D.C. <laughs> but think about all the restaurants, the small businesses, yeah. the right. transportation, all it's those huge. pieces that are part of it. And maybe, you know, when you look at the Endowment for the Arts funding, it was about $155 million, give or take. If you, if you added, if you actually kept it to inflation, just inflation, it should be around 300 plus. So we're actually gone backwards right. in the value that you can buy. And if, if you think about it in – as an, you know, I know mayors as a former mayor and a senator, but a former mayor, we looked at the arts as investment. Yes, and right. I was getting little, ready to say. Yeah. I just wrote that down. It's investment. just a little bit of money, 
and the multiplier. As a huge economic yeah. multiplier. I mean, do you think there's a place, as you were just describing it, you have to kind of re-think yeah. about how it's talked about. Is well, that one of the ways? Well, it's tough, I think, if you say, I'm able to back up something you said about, you know, uh, in, in, in your position running for president, it's very difficult for you to, to, uh, to talk about funding, to talk, to talk about money. But you have to eventually probably, do you have to take a stand on like how much, like, I would like to see at least a dollar per capita head uh, uh, towards the NEA? Are you allowed to stand for something like this? I think and, you and, are. And, yeah. So, so, I mean, can I ask you point blank, are you for a dollar per, <laughs> per Per, per the person? quick math on it's about three hundred twenty million. Right, yeah. and what is our budget right now? About one hundred fifty-five. Yeah, I'd be for doubling the the endowment for the arts, and that yeah. would actually finally get it up to the level of what it's been inflation adjusted. So it actually gets finally the buying power back, right? Which is, and that kind of money, you, I was always amazed how a little bit of money into an arts community, because another piece of this puzzle is. If they got a little bit of endowment for the arts or like in local communities a little bit, then the private sector, individuals and so forth. Yeah, no, I I think, I mean, if you look at how arts is funded, you typically see these big donors for capital projects. Capital. So, you know, the expansion of the Kennedy Center, which is underway right now, as, as you see when you go there, that's funded by big gifts. But a lot of the programming, you know, like the NSO programming is funded mostly by people not only buying tickets, but a lot of small donors. Yeah. Right. And so uh, big donors really fund capital projects because right. you kind of need big donors to know you can build a big building and get certainty around Multi-million it. Multi-million dollar. But the programming, yeah. you know, all the fabulous artists and bringing them to town and doing that, that is funded by mostly small donors. It's yeah. the kind of the way it works philanthropically. Do you think it's important to have good uh, tax policy then that kind of reflects that ability for people Middle class uh, Americans be able to participate in that and make sure they, just like the the wealthy, get a deduction. Making sure they do, and you know, you you make the argument. Some people make the argument. Well, well maybe they won't give. Well, maybe not. Well, you know? listen, incentives matter in life. Yeah. So if you create an incentive for people to make charitable deductions, they will make more of them. That's right. Just the way it works. Yeah. It's not, it's not that complicated. <laughs> right. right. So part of policy, just to educate the musician here, is does really come down to taxes and, and, and incentives so that smaller donors aren't, you know, are, are incentivized to, to Right. To and they're that. not disincentivized to make right. donations to do the it. arts. Yeah. They're just small. It is part of the tax code last time. They, they simplified some things with the standard deduction so that very, fewer people benefit from individual donations as they did in the past. So I think there's three things for a president to really think about with the arts. The first is to make sure the National Endowment so the arts is funded at a sufficient level. And what you've called for here is, a, is effectively a doubling. And I think that makes sense because mm-hmm. if you look where it's gone up relative to inflation, it's lagged inflation. That's right. That's right. So that would basically bring it back to the level. Yep. The second thing is to make sure there's incentive for people to make small dollar donations to support the arts. And the third thing is this notion of a president really being a leader on the issues and shining a spotlight on the importance of it and making the case for it the right way. Because, um, as you said, in many ways, it's smart economic policy. It's funny. I ran into a very one of the most successful real estate investors in the country about 10 years ago, told me a story about his investment philosophy. Mm -hmm. And he said, I just try to find where the artists are going. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right when they're going into a new neighborhood, I invest. Yeah, because he he described them as ha- having an intuitive sense, divining rod. I think it's true. Right about yeah. about what people are looking for and the feel, you know. And and he said it's really worked well for me. Yeah, because I find when I follow the artists, people follow them. Yeah. Well, it would be like if you had um, a big business you were cultivating in one of the outer boroughs of New York City. And you realize that if you're going to put a big gold building somewhere, it might be better if it's close to the arts and in a place that people were interested in going. Yeah. So uh, it, it does it does make sense yeah. and that, uh, that that that's where you'd want to go. And I yeah. think people people overlook that. Yes. You know, I, I, can you name you can't name a city that's of any interest to go to that doesn't have a, a symphony orchestra. A, a ballet and some right. arts. If you're going to move, I don't know, a big car company into a city, certainly it's a lot more attractive to say we have some stuff because you're moving your family and all your friends and family are, are moving there. It needs to feel good. Well, in know? this world we live in now, the, the environment that the business is looking for is really the environment for their employees. Yeah. Right. And if the environment doesn't have you know, good schools, good arts, good environment, mm-hmm. it becomes 
short on the list not to go to. It's it's part of societal infrastructure mm-hmm. is the way to think about it. Yeah. You think about it like infrastructure. That's right. right. It's part of societal infrastructure. So if you're locating a business and you're saying to yourself, you know, I want this to be a place that attracts people, you know, what will do that? And they'll start saying things like good public schools. Mm-hmm. That's something that attracts people. A vibrant arts community. Right. That's something that attracts mm-hmm. people. You know, the ability to access the natural world and being able to be outside and do things. That's something. But it's really one of those two or three things. That's right. And I think because people know it's not only good for them, but it's good for their community. Because as, as, as you know, Ben, as you know, Senator, the arts really does uh, encourage us to not only be more creative, but to really look at the world differently and actually helps us understand the truth of what's going on in the world. And people want to live in communities where those mm-hmm. kind of... They want to go to shows that inspire them, but they also want to go to shows that ask questions, Mm -hmm. right? And that's what you, you know, you don't get that if you don't have a vibrant arts community. Thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe today to the Arts Vote 2020 podcast series with Ben Folds on Anchor or any of your favorite podcast apps. Please go to artsactionfund.org slash podcast for more info. That's artsactionfund.org slash podcast. You'll get more info.